Well, six cells. <laughs> G'day, Bob from Small Crown Productions. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are talking about Elizabethan jigs. Now, a jig is kind of similar to what it sounds like. Essentially, it's a song and dance number that would happen at the end of the main show in the Elizabethan theatres. There are a number of references to the jigs in written form across different sort of um, civic records and legislations, and you can actually see that uh, the jig was spelt a number of different ways. But needless to say, they were all referring to the same thing. These post-show entertainments were often rhymed verse and filled with things like cross-dressing and sword fighting and elements of pantomime and masks and disguises and old men being cuckolded by their young wives. And they were almost always very bawdy. It's really hard to pin down a specific origin for the jigs. It seems to be that they're a bit of an amalgamation of a number of things coming together to form something new, which is often the case. But they have elements of things like oral tradition and elements of misrule from the sort of country carnivals and festivals, um, clowning and that sort of thing all kind of rolled together which seems to have also been pretty heavily influenced by elements of things like Commedia dell'arte from the touring Italian companies. Now, the Italians and other countries had actually been touring work into London and around London for some time, and these foreign plays were actually really, really popular. And uh, it's Stephen Gosson in 1579 writes this, and this is from Chambers. Um... I may boldly say it is because I have seen it, that the Palace of Pleasure, the Golden Ass, the Ethiopian History, the Armidus of France, the Round Table, bawdy comedies in Latin, French, Italian and Spanish have been thoroughly ransacked to furnish the playhouses in London. So these plays that were coming through became really, really popular and were a massive draw card to the theatres. These jigs became quite bawdy and were really pushing the boundaries of what was considered appropriate. And Gosson goes on to write further. As for that glossing play at the theatre which proffers you so fair, there is interlaced in it a bawdy song of a maid of Kent and a little beastly speech of the new stalled rogue, both of which I am compelled to bury in silence, being more ashamed to utter them than they. So you can see that these things were really starting to get very, very, very bawdy. Now, in 1580, we have a complaint by a guy called Philip Stubbs who says, filthy plays and interludes on stages and scaffold interlaced with bawdry and wanton shows presented with uncomely gesture that move the flesh to lust and uncleanliness. And there are plenty of records of people that left the playhouses after the interludes being so riled up with lust that they went straight to the brothels. Now, whether that was because of the interludes or not, but you know, I suspect that that was something that those people were probably going to do anyway, but it was being connected to the breakdown of society. Now, the main players in these interludes were those house clowns, the, the main clowns of the theatre. So originally Tarleton and then Kemp, and it became an opportunity for them to kind of have their own time on the stage, particularly towards the later end of the period where their role within the plays was getting more diminished and diminished. This was really a place where they could have their moment and really reconnect with an audience in a way that kept them coming back. The jigs, alongside with things like the trumpets and the cannons that were let off for plays, were one of the major causes of uh, resistance for the plays being allowed to go into the cities of London and keeping them out on the outer skirts in the suburbs. These jigs were really popular in the late 1500s through to the 1600s. They did start to die off towards the end of Shakespeare's career, and there are references to um, some later period stuff once the playhouses are closed, sort of close to that 1640s, sort of 1630s type period, where people are referencing the jigs from 10 and 20 years ago. So it seems that they had died off in popularity towards the end of that period. But they had become such a concern that in 1612, the Westminster magistrates posted this edict 
Uh, they saw fit to issue an order to suppress for jigs at the end of plays, referring to certain lewd jigs, songs, and dances. So basically, they were trying to, by law, suppress the actual jigs at the end of the plays because the crowds were getting so out of hand. There you go. And another element of the Elizabethan theatre that a lot of people really don't actually know much about. Um, there is a bit of writing around on it that you can dig into some more. I'll stick some of the links to the websites that I was able to reference. And of course, the references for the books that I'm using are in the description below. Uh, it would be great if you gave this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, stick around and have a look at some of these other Shakespeare videos that will pop up on the screen. I will see you there.